Did you ever think the earth would shake for me once more? I want to see the sky light up over this city left for a poor. Everybody's screaming and no one here can ask what for. And I just can't shake this feeling that we're out of luck and nothing more. A pound of dust, I wanna see a holy war, a photograph I begged and I swore, but I still want a little more. Run the luck out of this town, a book and crown ain't no disguise. I'm left to stop the bleeding with a hope to realize. My misery is teeming, my heart could be stealing yours. And I just can't shake this feeling that we're out of luck and nothing more. A pound of dust. Ah, hot. Morning. How's everyone doing? Welcome to the morning show. It's Monday morning. I am not at the Roosevelt Studios in the Bronx. I'm at my apartment because I am sick. I don't know what it is. Regular old common flu that I get whenever the seasons change or Corona. I got to go get checked out, I guess. So anyway, how's everyone doing? Can you hear me? Does this sound okay? Sounds weird to me. Like an echo. But good morning. We got Kyle, Kevin, Steve, Scott, Saad, Norm, Dylan, Josh. Don't forget the intro. Osborne, welcome to the morning show. Bite-sized bits of everything that I enjoy. Some music. Some American towns and their history. Baseball players and books. Boom. That's what we do here. Uh, What else? I have to do an ad read today. I keep forgetting. So don't make me forget about that. Let's see who we got. Enrique. Jamie. Jamie says, love this show. Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, Good morning. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Not Mr. Moon and Periscope. What up? Hope everything's working okay because... It's a whole new setup. I don't have two monitors here. It's very confusing. I have so many damn windows open. It's rather confusing. Anyway, that was Milk Carton Kids. I like Milk Carton Kids. They're very funny. Slow, sad songs, serious songs, but then their banter on stage is pretty funny. So how about that? All right. Everyone have a good weekend. Yankees won. I like that. Rusty says, whoa, in a different spot today. Yep. I'm at my apartment. Because I'm sick. I'm sick. Woke up this morning, felt like I swallowed sandpaper. Felt like someone went to town on my throat with a piece of sandpaper. So it's just me and Mac in the apartment today. He's eating a shoe right now. I should probably stop that. Ugh. I don't know what to do about that. Anyway, let's get straight into it. The, uh, the town today is Waterloo, Alabama. Why don't you go back to Greenbow, Alabama. Waterloo, Alabama. Says here that the town was incorporated in 1832 on the banks of the Tennessee River, and it was most likely, uh, the name most likely commemorates the Battle of Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo. Here it is on the map. Looks like it's right on the border of a bunch of states. Always cool to live in a town. All right, so it's right in the upper northwest Alabama. Very close to Mississippi and Tennessee. That's cool. (laughs) I was going to say it's cool to live on, on state lines like that. And then I was going to say, I don't think I ever have, but I, I mean, Connecticut is basically everywhere is on the state line. Oh, wow.
It's this tiny little town. I thought it was like this whole thing up here. Tiny little town on the river. I mean, this town's fucking tiny. Surrounded by water on two sides. Waterloo High School. The Waterloo High. What's their, what do you think their football team name is? Salt Hollow. That sounds like a cool hangout. The whole thing's water. How does how does this town have a high school? It's got like twenty houses. I mean, honestly, it has like less than fifty houses. How do they have a high school? That doesn't make any sense. Waterloo High School. How many kids do you think go to Waterloo High? Graduating class of. 30? I think my mouse just died. My keyboard? My keyboard might have just died. All right, Waterloo High School. How many people go there? Uh, uh, The high school has kindergarten through 12th grade in one building. Has about 250 to 350 students in school year. Well, I'm not a math guy. Let's say you got 250 kids. Whoa. 250 divided by 12. I mean, it's really 13 because they got kindergarten in there too, right? 250 divided by 13. I mean, that's a graduating class of 19, maybe. How the hell do they have a football team? The school has four sports, baseball, softball, basketball, and football. They compete in the Alabama High School Athletic Association Division 1A. Mascot is the Cougar, Waterloo Cougars. I give that Waterloo Cougars. Oh, it should be nautical-themed because they're right on the river. I give that two and a half points out of five. Previous mascot included the Stripes or the Striped Bass or the Bulldog. Those all would have been better. How the hell do they they feel to... um, a football team. It's an honest question I have. How how could they field a football team? They beat Phillips 19 to 14. How did how do you whatever? I don't know why. All right, I'm out of this. I'm out. I'm out. Get out, Jimmy. Get out. What else do we have on Waterloo? We got this video here. A weekend in Waterloo video. Some drone shots. Hell yeah. It has a... Ooh, the town lost a large area of land due to floods and later the construction of the Pickwick Landing Dam. The whole thing is right on the water, so the floods, I guess, that's sad. Look at those trees. Those look like not those don't look like trees that should be in water. They look like little broccoli sticks in a fake diorama of a lake town. Oh. Those trees are weirding me out. I never seen trees like that in water, I don't think. They look fake. Um some graffiti, King Mike. Oh, a little girl splashing. How about that? Here's the Wikipedia on the Pickwick Landing Dam. Uh, Pickwick Landing Dam. Okay. Well, when was it constructed? 19th century. It ruined the whole town. But they still got a football team and everything, so that's cool. And then the other thing about this town, Waterloo, Alabama, is that it... uh, It hosts the Trail of Tears commemorative motorcycle ride, which starts in Bridgeport, Alabama, and ends in Waterloo, Alabama. Created to raise awareness on the Trail of Tears, the ride commemorates the final point at which the Cherokee Native Americans were shipped off to Oklahoma by the Indian Removal Act. What a fucking... I mean, it was called the Indian Removal Act. It just seems... Seems rather bullshit. 
no one no one cared at all. So they ride their motorcycle on the Trail of Tears in I was about to say a couple things that I think I'm not going to say. I guess this is in good taste. Like dressing up like natives seems not in good taste. Trail of Tears pretty fucked up, huh? Look at that guy. Look at this guy's. I mean, look at, look at that guy. For the people that are just listening on podcast app, this dude's got the mutton chops into the Fu Manchu straight out of Civil War facial hair. And then he's got a leather vest with so many medallion type things, little pins, looking like an Applebee's worker on his leather vest. Underneath the vest, he's got like a three quarter, a quarter zip collared sweater. And then he's got like a pilot hat from the 1920s. As if he was going to be flying through the air and sunglasses resting atop his pilot hat and regular glasses over his face. So he's double glassing it. He's got two glasses. He's got the mutton chops into the Fu Manchu, so just the chin and under chin is shaved. 1920s pilot hat, Civil War facial hair, and then, you know, Sons of Anarchy leather biker vest. Just putting out so many vibes all at once. Pretty crazy. So he does the, he's part of the Trail of Tears commemorative motorcycle ride that ends in Waterloo. He was also smoking a cigarette. I should have added that as well. I mean, that guy had a braided beard next to him. Is that worth looking at? Look at that guy. Look at that guy. The braided beard, leather hat, glasses, Santa beard. Santa beard, and then he braided it at the bottom into like, I don't know, anal bead looking things. What a crew. Now, are they in it for the motorcycle ride, or are they in it to spread awareness about Trail of Tears? I don't know. I guess we just trust them. What the fuck is that? Making some meat. That looks pretty gross. That looks pretty gross. So anyway, that ends in Waterloo, Alabama. Uh, I guess that's all we got to say about that. I think I have that queued up. One, two, three. Password to my MacBook is one, two, three. Um, And boom, and morning, and hit button one. And that's all I had to say about that. Did it. Fucking did it. Next up, we have the baseball player, which is brought to you by DraftKings. Thursday was just the warm-up. Now it's time to get ready for Sunday's full slate of action, and there's no better place to get in the game than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. To add this week's excitement, DraftKings Sportsbook is rolling out a can't-miss offer. You haven't tried DraftKings Sportsbook yet. If you haven't tried DraftKings Sportsbook yet, head to the app now. Uh, Head to the app store now because you don't want to miss this. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users the chance to turn $1 into $100 when they bet on any team. That's right. <laughs> you can place you can place a $1 bet on any team, and if that team wins, you cash a cool Benjamin. How could you pass that up? Question mark. Come on. If you're new to DraftKings Sportsbook, head to the app now to scout their latest offers. Bet with DraftKings Sportsbook, a sportsbook that goes wherever you go. DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY when you sign up to get this can't-miss offer. Pick any team during week one, bet $1 on them, uh, and win $100 if they win. That's cool. It's a good turnaround. Uh, You find $1 on the street, throw it DraftKings way, they'll give you $99 back. 
Uh, that's $1 to win $100 when you use promo code John Boy during sign up for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You must be 21 or older, New Jersey only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. I'm going to have to drink my tea with honey in it now. Because that killed my throat. Soothing tea. Soothing tea with honey in it. I don't know what my dog's up to, but I bet it's no good. Matt! <whistles> yeah, come over here. You guys want to see Mac? Has it been a while since you've seen him? He got bigger. Say hi. Say hi to the people. Say hi to the people. We're going to talk about Jeff Treadway now. Stop eating shoes. Okay. Jeff Treadway, full name Hugh Jeffrey Treadway. He's a second baseman and third baseman, and he played nine seasons for the Reds, the Braves, the Indians, the Dodgers, and the Expos. Reds, Braves, Indians, Dodgers, and Expos. Don't need any shoes. Uh, Because of shoulder and hand injuries and uh, position competition, he only averaged 84 games a year. Let's go to his baseball reference. Here it is. Hugh Jeffrey Treadway. I'm not, I'm not centered in this top, top right setup I got here. I'll fix that real quick. Ba-da-da-da-da-da. Boo! Jeff Treadway. 1987 to 1995, let's see, uh, career OPS plus of 95, so he was 5% worse than your average baseball player of his time. Um, his 32-year-old season in 1995 was rather bad, and then he had a one in 1992 for the Braves that was bad as well. Never got any awards, never led the league in any category, just your average Utility guy? I mean, he played 128 games in 1990. So that's good. Uh, what do we want to do with Jeff Treadway? You want to go versus Hall of Famers? You want to go... You want to go debut? I kind of want to see if he got traded because he... I'm, I'll look at the chats. Hall of Famers or debut? You guys let me know. Debut comes with the nickname check. Hall of Famers just... Um, where's transactions drafted by the Expos in the 18th round side by the Reds as an amateur free agent. He didn't sign with the Expos purchased by the Braves from Cincinnati Reds released by the Braves signed as a free agent with the Indians signed as a free agent with the Dodgers. Okay. So he finally got traded in 1995 when he was rather bad traded by the Dodgers with Henry Rodriguez to Montreal Expos for Roberto Kelly and Joey Eichen. He was probably just like a piece to clear space. Um, someone said... Someone said... Do, 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 do. Someone said versus Hall of Fame. Someone said let's do versus other teams. Morgan, we never do that. I'll, I'll do that. Splits, career splits. Let's see what teams he hit best against. Um, where's opponent? Where's opponent? Show me opponent. Oh, got it. All right. So he had the highest OPS against the Toronto Blue Jays in two games started, but 10 games. He got 17 plate appearances. How did that happen? He only started two games. So that's eight right there. And then he, he was a defensive replacement or pinch hitter that many times to get 17 plate appearance by only starting two games. Anyway, he had a, can you guys see this? Do I need to make it bigger? He had a, oop, ah, oh, motherfucker, you loser. I just spilled my tea all over the whole table. Damn it. God damn it. 
All right, just spread everything out. He had a 1-4 OPS against the Blue Jays. And then the Florida Marlins, only one game, but one game started. All right, so the Phillies, yeah, the Phillies. Like I'm uh, in seventh grade being a catcher and uh, balls in, coming down. Voice cracks a lot when you do that. Uh, Philadelphia Phillies, 31 games started, 371 batting average, 423 on base percentage, 988 OPS. So he did pretty good against the Phillies, and that's a real, that's a real shake. And then the Pirates. Dude liked playing in Philadelphia. Where's he from? He's from Georgia. Be cool if he was from Philadelphia. But he's not. Uh, T down. Yeah, T down. So that's Jeff Treadway. And that's all we got to say about him. Oh, play the sound bite, dummy. And that's all I had to say about that. Jeff Treadway. All right, so... I don't have my book of all the poems here. Here's what we're going to do. You guys are going to... You got to give me one through four and then a one through 20. Give me two numbers, one through four, one through 20. Well, 22 is always a thing. That doesn't fit either criteria. So two, we got two is the first number, 18. All right, so I'm going to go to my two as the first number and then 18. Two as the first number, let me take a sip of my tea. Two as the first number. One, two. Well, we already did, we already did the... The 18. It was uh, Being There by Jersey, whatever. So I grabbed 19, which is Bukowski. But it's not um, it's not poems by Bukowski. Looks like I haven't read this yet. It's uh, I definitely have, though. It's uh, More Notes of a Dirty Old Man. Now I'll do page number, and you guys always do page number 22. So, these are short, short stories. What is this? I haven't read this one yet, so I don't know what this is about. I'm guessing it's short stories. No. What is this? Has anyone read this? It's like, um, it's not formatted in any way. It's not short stories, not poems. It looks like, it looks like it's formatted like a novel. But I don't think it is a novel. I have no idea what this is. Here's a weird page. Okay, we'll do this page. We'll do this page. It's got weird things on it. People who call other people assholes generally are. When you've considered everything, you've considered too much. This is Buke writing Hallmark cards now. Human relationships do not work. Brilliant men are created out of desperate circumstances. Fools are also. This is kind of annoying. When you marry the woman, you also marry her entire family. Most men who sleep late in the morning are a superior breed. Sounds like Buke slept late. Women are braver in situations they have to face alone. Men tend to get braver in and before crowds. Ooh. Is it sexist? I don't... Is that true? Seems like... I don't even get what this book is. The poets do the least to become known. Uh, I don't know what this is. 
When the agony of all the people is heard, nothing will be done. The best people are the ones you never meet. He had a pretty shitty outlook on life sometimes, huh? I have met both the rich and the poor and have found them to be equally unnatural in their positions. Okay. If anyone's read this, more notes of a dirty old man by Bukowski, let me know like what it's all about. Because I know it's not a novel. I've read all his novels. I thought it was a collection of short stories. But it doesn't seem to be that either. I don't know what that is. Well, it's, it's the book today, I guess. Not the most exciting one. Sorry. I apologize. Um, boom. All of my book collections is history books from my classes. I got a lot of those. I got a, we got, I got, still got tons of books in California. I can't wait till I have a house and an office and like just books everywhere. I'm excited about that. Uh, Chuck was grumpy that day. Yeah, a lot of that shit was kind of like, yeah, get over yourself, Bukowski. Get over it. It's, it's, not un, it's not so uncool to be happy, which I think is why I grew out of him a little bit. Being happy is pretty nice, you know? You don't got to gotta act like something's wrong if you're happy, which I feel like he tried to do a lot. Cool. All right. I think I'm done. It's 930, so Jake's going to come back. Uh, Abe says being a curmudgeon is exhausting. It is. It is. I feel like you go through a time of life where you're like, all right, you know, everything sucks, full of angst and shit. And then you're like, well, you know, I don't think you need to do that. Being happy is more fun. Uh, Not that sad times don't exist. And I think you should embrace sad times. Don't fight them. That's what I always say to people. All right, I'm out. I'll see you guys. uh... What's Mac doing? I I don't know. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. He says goodbye. See you later. We got uh, Talking Baseball coming up at 10. Talking Baseball pregame show at 11.30 or 12, 12.30. Uh, Talking Yanks voicemail up today. I think that's everything. Love you guys. See ya. Oh, yeah. New soundtracks today. Get excited. I'll tell you more about it tomorrow.